because we're outdoorsmen and because all our friends are outdoorsmen. There's so much connection, it's, it's all emotional. And so you have to have that little bit of separation of like, like if something dies, right? Like, like if fly fishing dies, like you can't just carry it forever. And we're victim of that, like, right? We, of course we hang on to things longer than we should. Um, but then I think the other side of that is we get this opportunity to just like do this cool stuff and carry this cool stuff and make cool displays. I want to look at it from a child's view. I want to I want to pretend when I come in or when I think about my store that I'm that customer who's never been into anglers before, but I love hunting and fishing. If I was them, I would want to come in and be like, oh, wow, like what what is this place, right? And I, and I want our products, our displays, our, our employees to represent that. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Anglers basically starts with Sandy Point. So Sandy Point's like 1952-ish. And this guy, Joe Habel, um, decides he's going to open up, which was right next to Sandy Point, a store that's going to sell fishing goods, gas, um, groceries, and really just got pushed more and more, I think, to the fishing outdoor side of things. Joe Habel, I think, big outdoor guy too. Loved that kind of stuff. So um, so did that, and then eventually they moved the angler, anglers to here. Like 10 or 15 years later, I guess probably like mid 60s, that's when this initial store was built. So this store is now three or four times larger than it was there, but like that initial store, and I wanna say they, they pretty much like built it. He started it, and then my grandfather bought into it pretty early. Joe Habel and my grandfather, John, were partners. Um, and I think that that went on for like 10 or 20 years into the 80s. Um, but Joe Habel was more like the hands-on guy, so he and my dad, I think, more ran the business. So I worked um, at a department store called Brits out near Pro Plaza. It's no longer there. And they had a sporting goods section, and Mr. Purrier, the manager, said something to me, and I went, well, you got all the wrong stuff. And he went, what do you mean? I said, this is all ocean stuff. You're getting it from New Jersey distributor, Folsom Corporation. He goes, what do you mean? I said, you're not going to sell this here. He goes, well, I got the rep coming in next week. You tell him what you want out of here, and you tell him what you want. And I did. And then it took off from there. And then my dad knew that. But anyways, long story, I came home one day. I was bitching about something or whatever. And he goes, no, that's okay. Bob and I just bought anglers from Joe, so you, you can go work there and straighten them out. I said, well, I don't know about all that because the guy's name that ran the place was Kim Julie, and he knew a lot. But anyways, that's how it started. That's how it started. Joe Habel passed away a little early, like in the, in the 80s, around, pretty much around when I was born, 85-ish or so. Um, and... Um, and so that's what our family kind of just like, you know, they became the sole owners of, of anglers. And, um, and in those years, you know, again, the renovations, like expanding our warehouse, expanding the store, that, that all happened. Um, so then we kind of, you know, just fast forward to, <laughs> to where we are now. I've been here 20 years now. My sister works here. So it's still a very family run business. Um, but it's very much, you know, kind of like ingrained in us. You know, my grandfather, when he was alive, like he always was still part of the store, you know, always questions this, that, you know, like it was always, always the whole thing. And, and I feel like for a nice part of our family is like, just like a lot of people who grew up in the world of fishing and the families of fishing, it's like, we all fish together. We all hunt together. Like probably every important conversation I had with my grandfather was like, it's on a boat. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, and all those great experiences. So it's, it's very cool. You know, we're very blessed because we get to do this, you know, like retail people being like, Oh, retail sucks and not and, and like, sure it does, but like, so do most jobs, but it's like, we do do things that we love. Like we're not just like, Oh, we run a fishing store. Like it's like, 
you know, this is, this, is, this is what we do. What I think separates us from the big box stores is you get this down-home um, personalized experience. So all of the staff here are fishermen or hunters or, or clothing experts. So you, you get that personalized touch. When you come in the store here, you're greeted. Um, once you make a pur purchase, you're, you know, you're wished well out the door. Um, and then you can have a conversation with someone. So the, the thing that I really like about the store is the fact that we're not salesmen. We are fishermen. So we're going to have a conversation. My most favorite kind of customer is the, the customer new to the sport of fishing. And we get to walk them through, step them through, give them like an honest assessment of here's the equipment you need, here's the bait you need to get started, and help them be successful. Typically people think Chesapeake, they think striped bass, they think rockfish. But you have to, like with the regulations and the moratoriums and, and et cetera, and the seasons changing, um, you have to adjust. Um, so fortunately for us, um, the fish themselves have helped out. So a few years ago, it was snakehead. That became a big thing. That's almost like its own industry now. Um, people are diehard snakehead people. So we adjusted in, in turn, right? Um, we, we brought in more equipment, rods, reels that could handle those snakeheads, um, lures that are specific to snakeheads. And we were talking about localized um, lures that, that you can only get here in Maryland, and some of them you can only get here at Anglers. So we work with a, a lot of uh, manufacturers that spend specialize in those those types of lures and we carry them recently more recently it's been these blue cats so these blue cats have been coming out of nowhere and they've been north of the bridge so uh, you know we, we had some concerns with with the rockfish season being uh, the the trophy season being cut off this year like what will that do well people make the adjustment so instead of targeting rockfish now they're targeting those big blue cats I mean some of these things are 40 in excess of 40 pounds so what do we do as a store as a business to serve our customers we adjust our stock and our inventory so we literally have end caps that's specific to catfishing. So I've had lots of customers come in. I've never caught a catfish before. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm buying into all this hype with all of these things because they are a lot of fun to catch. What do I do? And then we can talk them through that. I really love the layout of our store. It, it makes sense. So everything's basically compartmentalized and depending on what type of fishing you, you want to do, you can go to a specific aisle and everything you need is right there. So like if you look at this wall, this is our terminal tackle wall. So all of your sinkers, your snap swivels, everything down to split shots, um, e even split rings and all of that sort of thing is on this one wall. So you can do all your terminal tackle fishing right here on this wall. And then if right next to that, what do you need when you have terminal tackle? You need tools. So all of your tools are right behind you, literally. Everything from fillet knives to pliers to scissors. Uh, these things have really become popular over the last few years. If you, if you do anything with braid, you know, braid can be somewhat of a pain. Um, and these little, these are actually anglers branded. Um, these little snips here are invaluable. Then, if you come down this way and you kind of pan down this way, take a look at this. Soft plastics have really become huge over the last few years. Um, all different kinds, paddle tails, straight tails, all different manufacturers, and everybody has their own preference. And we have an entire wall of that here. The storms. The tsunami storms have really become popular over the last few years, um, and there's a reason for that. It's because they work. So if you're a paddle tail thrower, um, I use them myself in the fall, um, especially like something like this color. If you look at this, it looks exactly like an LY, which is exactly what the rockfish are eating. Um, these things work. They're pre-rigged. They have the hook on them. They already have the weight in the head. We sell a ton of them. And you'll see there's a couple of um, these little pegs that are empty. That's because we sell out of them so much. So they, they really, really work. In terms of jigging, it can be so confusing because you look at this, this whole aisle here and you're like, man, what should I, what should I get? Um, there's de and if you talk with 10 different people, they'll tell you 10 different things. I'll tell you what works for me. Um, BKDs are like the old school, lo again, local bill, um, 
who, who runs B, BKD. He's a friend of mine. He comes in the store. Um, I love it because it works. Um, BKDs are super easy to use. Um, they've got a lot of different colors here. And this is what I use primarily for jigging rockfish. Now, if you talk with Bill, Bill takes them down to Florida. He uses them for various other species. Um, but these things just literally work and they're pretty resilient too. That's another thing that I like. So you catch a few fish, you can spin your hook around and, and have it come out the back and it'll, it'll almost double the life of, of these things. Um, what I tell people, if, if you were to come in here and talk with me and you were new to to jigging. Um, what I tell people is, is there's two baits that I would start with. One would be a BKD. The other one would be, again, another local business here would be the Bustums. Um, I love the Bustums. Bustums are really, you see that articulation there. Um, they're really good and user-friendly for the new person who's new to jigging. They don't have to worry about a whole lot of movement. The bait does the work for you. Yeah, so they're really great choice here between these two. And then once you get into it, and you can make your decisions from there and you can try different things. So this year is the first year I got into Z-Man. The guys here love Z-Man. They love Z-Man because Z-Man is super resilient. Like you can't kill it, you can't hurt it, right? The, the thing that, that kind of steered me away from Z-Man a little bit at first is because you have to crazy glue them to the jig head. So I sat down, once you, if you pre-do it like the night before, you're fine and you, and you have them in there. So I did use them this year. It was a very slow bite. Z-Man was catching the fish. So even over some of my other um, traditional lures, so they work. But yeah, and then the fun of this sport is playing around. Now you figured it out, you've caught a few fish, now I wanna try some different things. So maybe, maybe I'll grab something else, maybe a bait fuel. Um, these things are scented. Um, my sort of fallback to was, was always um, the gulp. You know, I couldn't catch anything on anything else. Something in that scent of gulp would always make a fish bite. So yeah, so you can play and, and try the different ones. Um, sniper, uh, striper snipers are another one. I've definitely used these things, they work. Um, I just think there's, there's so many options, it, it's half the fun of it. You know, you just try, try different things. And then, if you pan this way, this is your hook selection. So all the different manufacturers, Eagle Claw, Bear Paul, all of them are here, Gamagatsu. If you snell your own stuff, you know, we have the, the separate hooks and then if you want stuff pre-snelled, that's here as well. So it's all literally right here in a small area and you can pick through and grab whatever you want. I'll tell you one thing that's really become popular over the last few years, and that's these Chesapeake Sabikis. So you may be familiar with the Hayabusa, or some of the other brands of sabikis, which you use down in the ocean and in Florida, they use them a lot. What makes this unique is that it's legal for Maryland. And I jumped on the bandwagon probably about four years ago. And what I mean by legal is um, it only has two hooks per rig. So these things really, really work. We sell a ton of them. Um, they're excellent. All of the new fishermen that come in, especially if they have kids and they want the kids, you know how you lose kids right away, right? Uh, they're not catching fish. They want the action. We use the Hayabusa or the um, Chesapeake Sabikis on there and they work. And the nice thing about them is, is the hook is so small, you only have to tip them with a little bit of either um, fish bites or blood worm or clam. So you only need a little bit, but we do tip them. A lot of times these things, they have like a little sheen to them um, and they'll catch fish without bait on them as well. So they're really, really excellent choice. So then if we come down this way, how you doing? This is all of our panfish aisle. So everything in here is for crappie and perch, um, spot, um, all of the, the smaller fish. And this, this is something interesting too, if you wanna get a shot of this. This is our perch hounder um, supply. And that's, a, again, that's a neat little story with this. This is a local business. The guy actually grew up on the Chesapeake Bay and he created these, these perch hounders. They used to be called perch pounders. Um, 
specifically for fishing these waters, which I, I feel like is, is excellent. And the nice thing about them is they work 100%. Yep. There's a, actually a cult following to them. We used to sell shirts that had all the different perch hounders on them, but he keeps making different ones, so it's hard to keep up with it. But and yep. tell me, Mike said something about you can't get these online or anywhere. You tell can't. You, you can't. You can only get them at our store, so we're the exclusive provider of, of the perch hounders. Um, people will come in the door. All this, this entire wall will catch fish, but they'll come in the door and say, do you have perch hounders? And if we say no, they're going to turn around and walk out. <laughs> So, I mean, here's, here's some of the other options. So they, they started these uh, a couple of years ago as well. These are Captain Burt's snakehead jigs. So made by the same people who, who do the perch hounders. And these things, I've heard nothing but great things about the, the, um, the snakehead lures that they make. So, and again, these are exclusive to anglers. And a lot of us fish and we know what works and what doesn't. So we know what we've had success with. So we do a lot of in-house rigging here and we do it with a purpose. So if you come over to me and say, hey, what can I use for um, pickerel or for snakehead? I'm gonna take you to the stuff that I know works, that I've caught fish with. So we allow the guys here that freedom to build in-house rigs that are anglers branded and customers can buy them. And obviously you can only get them here at Anglers. Yep. Now so what's that one for? This one's for pickerel. Thank you very much. Yeah, and this, this particular one with this electric chicken color is outstanding. Yeah, it really works well. We were, we're trying to carry as much local um, products as possible um, that work. And the nice thing about dealing with these small businesses that are local is all of the guys that work there fish and they fish for the things that they sell the products for so which is which is excellent the other thing too about our store is um we had uh, talked earlier about like the catfish and and the um the snake head so if you back up just a little bit you'll see we actually have a end cap that's specific to catfish. So you can see it right there, it says catfish supplies. Everything you would possibly need to catch catfish in the, in the Chesapeake is right here. All of the rigs, if you don't feel like um, tying them, they're, they're already made. Um, some folks come in, they don't wanna deal with snelling hooks and things like that. They just wanna go, turnkey, boom. Come over here, pick up a couple packs of this for a couple bucks and you're, you're on your way and you're fishing. The other thing too that, that we do is custom boxes. So this is one example here. This is a pickerel set. And this is like a starter kit for getting you into whatever fish that we have the box um, assembled for. But these are really nice because it takes the guesswork out of everything. So you don't have to buy packs and packs of things. You're not sure if they work. Boom, the guys here all fish for pickerel. They put in the things that they know that works and we sell it as a package. Yeah. And on this aisle right here, you can see the guys are busy working. This is not complete yet. Um, this will be an end cap specific to perch with staff picks. So we have a, a huge tournament coming up here on July 28th. I believe it is the, the largest white perch tournament in the country, I believe. Um, white Perch Open, a uh, lot of fun, and we've, we've timed it this year to align with the moratorium with, with rockfish. So we'll have a lot of people coming in here fishing for perch, and again, this makes it nice and easy. They can come over here. This is what our staff uses. Um, a lo lot of the folks who are especially new to the, to the sport need a little bit of help. Hey, what can I use? I'm throwing lures, or I, I wanna use cut bait. Boom, this, this, this will take the guesswork out of it. Yep. These things have been really gaining popularity too over the last few years. And these are the fish bites. So you had asked me the question about the tipping the sabiki rigs. Um, blood worms are expensive. Blood worms work though. However, if you don't want to spend the money on the blood worms or a lot of people get squeamish with them, you can, you can always use these fish bites. They work really well, um, especially in the summer months when the water's, water temperature is warm. Um, tip your sabiki rigs with a little piece of these and, and you, you, you got money right there. All right, moving on down the line here. Okay, so this area over here is gonna be a lots of different lures. So we have jerk baits and rattle traps and buzz baits, spinner baits, all different types. And again, 
Um, some of them are local. A lot of them are really popular, and we do look at sales reports, and we do listen to our fishing staff, like what are the good colors? What are the ones that are working? And that's what we try to, try to stock here. If you look on this side, this is more top water. So you have different types of top waters, poppers and walk the dog type stuff. Um, these storm baits have been great over the years. Um, the spooks and spook juniors have been outstanding. Um, and again, if you wanted to do top water and you didn't know what to do, how to do it, you'd come in, talk with one of us, and we'd talk you through and, and probably point you at something that, that we know that works. Lonely Angler, another local one. Yeah, these are really good. Lots of noise here. Colors are excellent. All of these work. They all really work. It's just a pre preference and what you, you know, what you've used and what you've had. Here's a plug starter kit. This is great. So this has a little bit of everything in it. It has some of the the jerk baits in it. It has poppers and walk the dogs and even old school rattle traps in there. So this would if I if I was brand new and didn't have anything I could pick up an angler's plug starter kit and then I'd have pretty much everything that I need and I could build from there. Yeah, this, this is a fun aisle here. Um, so bucktails on the one side, but what's really become pop popular over the last few years are pairing jig heads with soft plastics. And there's a whole wall here of jig heads. Now, one thing you will notice is um, there's not a ton of, of different jig heads. There's just the ones that we all know work. So lots of different choices here in terms of color sizes, um, hook sizes, etc. cetera. Um, but we all know that these work. They work really well in this area. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Coach Jig Heads. This is another local one. I actually know Coach. He was a, he was a baseball coach at my son's high school. Um, he's a great guy. He does a good job with these, with these um, jig heads. And then the GI Jig Heads, which, which are my personal favorite, um, LJ Lonnie Johnson runs that business. Um, he's a great guy as well, F does a ton of fishing, used to be a guide, um, a great partner to Combos for Kids and to the store. Um, yeah, the, the stuff just works. It, it absolutely works. And then when we come around here on this back wall, um, Obviously there's some stuff for your boat over here, but you'll see some more of the GI jig head lures because a, a lot of these metals and spoons have become popular over the last few years. So we have that mixed in with some of the old school tsunami stuff, um, epoxy jigs, which have been around forever. And, and again, you would come in and say, all right, what, what do I use to jig up black sea bass or whatever? And we'd take you over here and give you the options. Now we're stepping into crabbing territory. <laughs> so th this is really nice. I just had a customer today. He, he's fairly new to crabbing. He's watched all the YouTube videos, right? So he knows what he wants to do. Um, we have turnkey setups for, for crabbing. So, you know, they come in, obviously as a recreational person, you can only go 1,200 foot. So you can buy a pre-rigged, snood lined 1200 foot trot line or you can buy two sixes or just one six if you want to go small right and even down to the float and anchor rigs with the chains so you can literally come in here um, you spend a couple hundred bucks and you walk out of here with a, a trot line that's ready to roll all you need to do is bait it then all of the other little supplies that are associated with, with crabbing, if you want a hand line, we have that, that line. Um, we actually have the hand lines with, with sinkers on them to keep, keep the bait down. There's a ton of hand liners that go to these parks that are around here. Sandy Point has a little crabbing pier. Um, you know, Mattapeak, people, people crab off of those piers as well. So yeah, everything you would possibly need Boom, right here. Before we move on, you got to settle a debate for me. So. Go. J.O.'s versus Old Bay. I am 1,000% J.O. 
a thousand percent. Um, Jo is a local business too. Um, they're they're over there in Halethorpe, Maryland. Um, I, I believe Mike Rowe did a did an episode with Jo. It's a family owned business like us. Been in business for years. Um, hands down, Jo. And so, Jo number two is what I steam my crabs in. Jo number one is more like the consistency of Old Bay that you can put on literally everything: popcorn, pizza. You, corn on the cob, it's excellent on corn on the cob, it's really good. So yeah, I'm a J-O guy, thousand percent, hands down. I think the key is like you gotta get out of stuff to get into stuff. So it's like there's a constant flow of like, like there are hundreds of SKUs down there that are dead. They're on closeout, they're on pegs, they're this and that. And maybe a year or two ago, those were the hottest things in the world. So it's like, but we gotta get rid of that to bring in the new, so it's kind of that thing of like, you, you kind of have to not be scared, right? Like you have to, you have to take chances. Um, you got to bring stuff in. I mean, I would say I, I, I probably do almost all the new buying for fishing. Um, and, and I would probably say like of new lures I buy or plastics or something like it's probably only like two or three out of 10 that really hit or stay in the store for more than a year or two. We always want to try and be cutting edge, so we're always going to have products that are like, like, if it's new for the most part and it's a big company, a Shimano, this and that, like we pretty much bring it in, see how it does, and it may be in and out within six months. Um, you know, some products end up being staples of your store and that's what we're looking for, you know, those like, those key movers. But yeah, I think, I think it is just, it's just reacting to, you know, what's happening in real time. Like, you know, we're not stupid. Like our customers can get online, they can buy lures, this and that. So it's like, if you don't have it when they come, like they're not gonna come back, you know what I mean? And, and I think that's also that mix of like, we buy from so many local lure makers. I think we're like one of the few retail stores anywhere that could say like, like we have hundreds and hundreds of SKUs that you can't find anywhere on the internet, which is crazy. I don't even know how that exists, right? Um, but those are the things that keep you fresh, keep, and again, customers love that stuff. Like, like, right, you don't just wanna see all the big name brand, you know, like cookie cutter. Like if our store looked like Bass Pro, no one would come into our store. This is our famous hat wall. And I probably own almost, I'd say a good 85% of these hats here. I love hats, use them all the time. Um, what's cool, Anna does a really good job of keeping things fresh. So we have the ones that we know that sell. We have a lot of angler specific hats that are made. You can only get them here. They're, they're made specifically for our store. Here's one that has hunting on it. And look what this one has on it. The perch pound, perch hounder. <laughs> that we were talking about. So we sell a lot of them. Anna keeps it fresh over here. Um, we, we, we sell tons of these hats. I, and like I said, I own most of them. This is a newer um, manufacturer that we started carrying. It's the Qualified Captain. Their, their stuff is so nice. We have Pelagic, Avid, Local Coast. That's another local business that we carry. And you'll see in the apparel section that we carry some of their stuff as well. If you look at our our sign, this is what everyone knows. It's an, it's an icon around in this area here. Um, you see that, you know you know exactly where, where you're talking about. You know our store. Um, Anna, so let, let me get Anna, because Anna runs the clothing department here. Oh, she, Anna is Charlie's daughter. And we're talking about the Angler's logo and the beer beaten bullets, yep. and how did we get there to this? Oh, uh, well, I design all of these and I basically like do it on a little post-it note <laughs> and do my little doodle and then yep. I send it off to our guys and then they'll send it back to us and then first it was just a cooler, then we're at like add the decals, add the, the geese in the background flying, add the shotgun shell. So it's all custom stuff and I feel like people come in just to collect new shirts. And I guess we're never allowed to change the, uh, the marlin on the uh, sign out front. Uh -uh. No, yeah, that'll no, be there. Man, I feel like that's how everybody knows us. It's yes, iconic. It is. We're like, we wish we had a fancy, like, different logo, but that, uh, that's it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yep. me too. So beer, bait, and bullets, right? <laughs> so here's the beer section. The nice thing about our beer section is, is Kristen does a really good job of working with local breweries or local distributors and they bring a lot of craft beers in that are done brewed locally um, Ocean City Maryland Frederick um, Ellicott City um, that sort of thing and it does a really it does a really good business over here with the beer um, we do have a pretty decent um, 
uh, whiskey selection as well over here. So a lot of guys come in here just for the whiskey. Um, we've done some raffles with, with high-end whiskeys as well. Um, that's worked out really well. Um, so yeah, this is the, this is the beer por portion of our beer bait and bullets. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's nothing more gratifying than you get someone who comes back like a day or two after they just talked to you in the store and they're like, man, like we went out there, we did, and they're so hyped. That's a really cool part, I think, of just like who we are, what we do. I think even as, as industries changed and people are going away from customer service, people even in general at checkout, you go to the grocery store, you don't even check out with a person. And it's tough because the business is now moving where it's like, because of all the other expenses of running a business, which I could list a thousand of them, but they didn't exist 20 years ago, they exist now. Business costs a lot more to run, so people are cutting back on employees. And I think with anglers, we're, we're essentially bucking that trend. Like, we are doing the exact opposite. We do do a lot of marketing, but I think that is also our marketing. Like, your marketing is word of mouth. It's what people experience and then share with others and how that word gets around. From that standpoint, I know my dad would feel the same way. Like, we feel like right now we have the best staff we've ever had in this store. Here's an example of, of what we carry in the store. And again, I think this is what sort of separates us from like a big box store. Um, very customized combos for very specific fishing. So even to the point where if you look at this one, we've partnered up with Steve Griffin of Griffith's Guide Service. And these are the actual combos, the exact setup that he would have you use if you went out there to fish with him. Customers come in all the time, they're like, I want exactly what I fished with on Steve's boat. Boom, there it is. Really? Yep. Takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. But in addition to that, we have a, a huge selection of, of rods. And again, you would talk with our staff and tell, we'd ask you questions. What type of fishing are you gonna try to do? What, what are you targeting? What do you wanna do? Uh, what's your price point? That sort of thing. And then we can literally step you through and there's an, there's an option for anything up there. But there's also other types of combos too here. Some of them are, are specific to um, panfish. Some of them are specific to jigging. Some of them are top water. Some of them do everything. So it depends on what you want to do. Along with all of the traditional rod manufacturers like St. Croix and Shimano and Daiwa, which are all great selections, we also have um, locally made rods that are very specific to this area. Um, we do carry JLS and these things are customized to fish in the bay and to do um, very specific fishing. We actually have rigs or combos, if we walk around the other side with these JLS rods, that a lot of thought was put into to pair them up. So we talked about the GI jig heads and some of the rain minnows and some of the, the, the things that, um, that we carry in stock. This combo here is made specifically to throw these rain minnows. Um, it is a JLS rain minnow rod. Yep, so I mean, lots of thought to put in this, and this is something I feel like it gives you that local touch that if you want to get that deep into it, which a lot of us do, um, it gives you that option, that next level option, which is cool. So one of the things I'm really excited about that Anglers gives back to the community um, is with our nonprofit organization, Combos for Kids. So what is Combos for Kids? Well, it, it's an effort that, that came out of uh, giving back to the community, but very specifically targeting kids and families who uh, maybe are underserved or who have special needs. Uh, we've been doing it now for about three years. It's really taken off. We partner with other like-minded organizations that support kids. Uh, youth outreach from, from police programs, um, lots of other organizations, Voices for Children, kids, kids who are in the foster care system, um, Ruth Eason School, kids who are um, have special needs and things like that. And what we do with them is we give them a day of fun. We take them out on boats. The kids fish from shorelines. Uh, we, we steam crabs for them. Uh, we have tons of fun on the beach. So it's an experience for them and their families where they can have some peace through the sport of fishing. So that's what we do. We leverage 
leverage the sport of fishing to give back to the community. Um, it's been great. It's been going on. Like I said, this is our third year. Um, it's really taken off, and we're super excited about it, very passionate about it, and the community sort of rallies around it, which is, which is good. One thing I am trying to do, though, is to get more interest on our social media side and get that word out there. So we do have social media. We have It's under Combos for Kids, under Facebook and Instagram. I'd love to get to a thousand um, subscribers. I think that would be great. I know the kids all who, who um, participate in the events, they all subscribe, but I'd really like to get the word out there so everyone can kind of see what it is that we're doing. So one other unique thing about our program is a lot of times we'll, we'll do programs for or events for um, underserved youth. And what we, what's ended up happening with some of these events is some of the kids have never fished before. They got into the sport through the event and then they fell in love with it and all they want to do now is fish. This year, I was very proud of this young man. He participated in one of our very first events, uh, had never fished before, fell in love with the sport, and then ran his own event. Uh, I thought that was awesome. So what we're gonna do with a lot of these organizations is partner with the kids who participate, who are interested in the sport, and bring them back to join the Combos for Kids team to actually mentor other kids who are in similar situations. So I think that's just phenomenal. One thing that's, that's pretty cool about the events that we run is not only do the kids get to fish, uh, fish from boats, fish from shorelines, but every kid who goes through our events gets a combo, a free combo to take with them. And I, I really want to take a second and thank our partners at Pure Fishing because they are the ones who provide that equipment for us to give to the kids and the families. In an ideal world, anglers would would have no walls. It would be it would be transparent. We would have any customer could have 365 degree view of how anglers works, runs, and what we're doing. Oh God, it's, you know, the kids grew up, they were always going to anglers. I mean, they were little kids when, they were, I was working here when they were born in the 80s, 85 and 87. So, you know, they grew up, anglers, anglers. And yeah, daddy, daddy won't be home all the time, but it worked. And they, they came in the folds later on they were great college materials, so we took them on. Anna's <laughs> laughing. But they do great. They do a great job, Mike and Anna. They really do. It is service. It's opening early in the morning, staying late at night. Um, it's the fresh bait, by far, fresh bait. I mean, you can't get that at a box store. You can't get that mail order. It's right here. you got to stop there. It's on the way to Sandy Point, the best launching facility in the whole state. It's on the way to Ocean City. So... It's location, 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 and has been. It'll continue to be. I mean, it's, I see it going on way past when I'm dead, but because it'll, it'll it'll survive. Whether you're cutting staff and just selling bottom rigs for perch, but it'll still keep on going. It will. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.